How's it going guys? Tony here. Today we are going to review Fantasy Star 4. We're going to see if this game belongs on the Sega Genesis Mini and I'm going to share what makes this game so good and some of its shortcomings too. Alright guys, well thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to me. That's going to put you in my contest for a Sega Genesis Mini. I'm giving one away at the end of the month of September. Okay guys, let's dig deeper. Let's get into Fantasy Star 4. Thanks for watching. Fantasy Star 4 is a JRPG released on the Sega Genesis. And I tell you guys what, this is one of my favorite JRPGs ever. And I believe it's one of the best JRPGs ever produced. At least in the 16-bit era. This game stacks up just as well, if not better in some areas, than say Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 3 slash 6. Those are some pretty tall words. Those are some pretty bold words. And we're going to see if this game lives up to that claim and if this game should belong on the Sega Genesis Mini. Let's check it out, guys. I'm super excited. Does Fantasy Star 4 belong on the Sega Genesis Mini? Um, hmm. Let me think about this one long and hard. Yeah! This is one of the best games on the system, hands down. The graphics, the soundtrack, the gameplay, the story, hands down, this needs to be on the Sega Genesis Mini. This game alone, you're going to have anywhere from 40 to 80 hours of gameplay, depending on how much you like to grind and how much you like to play this game. So the gameplay value alone is worth it. Also, this game's a little bit pricey, anywhere from $35 to $50, depending on where you purchase it. So yes, it is a good value to be included on the Sega Genesis Mini. And there's not too many JRPGs on the Sega Mini, so it makes sense putting one of the greatest ones on there. Now, I'm actually really pleased that they did not put Fantasy Star 2 or Fantasy Star 3. Those are okay games, but in my opinion, those are very, very clunky and just not as well designed as this game. So let's talk about the good and just what makes it such a great game. Let's talk. The good with Fantasy Star 4. Now this, in my opinion, is the best classic Fantasy Star game out there over Fantasy Star 1, 2, or 3, but maybe that's because I played this one first over the earlier titles. So you are going to get wrapped up with the story and the characters. You're absolutely going to love Chaz, Alice, Rika, all those guys, Rune. You're absolutely going to fall in love with them, and there's so much humor. There's actually some laugh out loud moments that you'll have just reading the text and just the stories with the characters. And I also really love the presentation. This originally was going to be a Sega CD game. And when they have quote unquote cutscenes, it's almost like a comic book style. It's almost like paneling. And the way they tell the story is very unique for a JRPG from this era. So you're going to love the story and the characters. I absolutely love the battle system. Now, if you are a grinder, if you love to grind out in RPGs, you are going to adore this game. Grinding is a must in this game. You have to do it. And if you're not really into the whole grind, rinse, and repeat 
with JRPGs of this era, then you might want to avoid this game. Now, that being said, you can actually put on what's called auto battle and just fly through some of those common battles when you're out on the field or in the dungeons. And yes, you are going to be exploring dungeons. You're going to be going through the world map. You're going to have various vehicles going planet to planet. And it's just so much fun figuring out what to do, where to go, and what you can do. There's a lot of exploration and I actually thoroughly enjoy that whenever you go to a new planet where do I need to go who do I need to talk to and how do I get to the next location I mean, that's just standard JRPG stuff but the location is very very colorful very very bright and just vibrant I also really really enjoy the graphic style and the soundtrack is so good I know I say that about a lot of games but it's just so iconic so classic and when I just hear that opening theme oh, it just takes me back it takes me back to my childhood it takes me back to a simpler time and it just makes me fall in love with this game every single time I hear it and you will love the soundtrack now you'll also enjoy the boss battles they're very challenging especially once you get later in the game and again you have to grind if you want to be successful in this game. I also like the difficulty in this game. I'd say it's about medium difficulty, but if you are struggling, embrace the grind. You have got to grind. And you can make it through any part of this game if you invest any time into grinding. Let's talk about the bad. The bad with Fantasy Star 4. I am not gonna lie this is a near perfect game for me this is a 10 out of 10 game for me it's one of the greatest JRPGs ever made and one of the greatest JRPGs on the Sega Genesis now one thing that I do consider here when talking about the bad is people who do not like JRPGs you're not a fan of JRPGs so let's look at it that way because I'm a huge fan of the genre I'm a huge fan of these kind of games, so I get it. I understand it. So, if you're not really a fan of these games, you're really not going to like the amount of time that you have to invest in the story, in the grinding, and in the characters. So, I understand that. So, time is a factor. Maybe you don't want to sink 40 hours into a game, and you might think that that's a waste of time. Maybe you're looking for a quicker playthrough quicker style game like an hour to an hour and a half just sit down on the couch with a buddy that kind of thing and also it is one player so I get it I understand it also sometimes it does get old grinding now I have been playing this game since the 90s so yeah I I don't know I struggle with that comment I struggle with that concept because this game is just so much fun even today so let's talk about my childhood memories with fantasy star 4 my memories of fantasy star 4 are vast this was another cinema plus rental game I would spend a lot of money renting this game over and over and over again now you had to save your game on the battery on the game itself one thing that I hoped and prayed, because I wouldn't rent it for like two or three weeks at a time, one thing that I hoped and prayed was that my file remained on the game itself. I, I hoped that when someone else rented it, they would not erase my file. And luckily, I got really far into the game. Luckily, no one erased the file. So that's kind of a, uh, you know, a 90s kid problem, you know, renting games. That had a continuation, had a save battery. That was a problem back then. Um, and with the mini, you're not going to have to worry about that, I hope. Uh, but it is just such an awesome game. A lot of great memories. Again, I love the characters. I love the story. And I just come back to this game quite often. I have not beaten it, believe it or not. There's always been something that has gotten in my way. And I'm actually thinking about doing a live stream covering some more Fantasy Star 4 
and trying to beat this game possibly. That could be kind of a winner project because I've never sat down and just, hey, I'm going to beat this thing. And it does take a good chunk of your time. Alright guys, well, let me know what you think of Fantasy Star 4. Have you played it? Have you played through it? Is it one of your favorite JRPGs of all time? Do you think it's one of the greatest JRPGs of all time? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, do you think this belongs on the Sega Genesis Mini? Well guys, I hope you enjoy the rest of this footage. And guys, again, one of my favorite games. I, I can't emphasize that enough. And you're going to have a blast with it. Please subscribe to me if you haven't done so. Again, that's going to put you in the running for a Sega Genesis Mini I'm giving away. Enjoy the rest of this footage, and have a great rest of your day.